and the price. We're looking at $120. Not too shabby, not perfect. Well, that escalated quickly, everybody. Full review already for the New Balance Beacon V2. I've only been running in the shoe for about seven to 10 days, and I always get to 50 miles before my full review, and bada bing, bada boom, there it is for the Beacon V2. And before we dive into my thoughts, here we go. Six millimeter drop, 26 millimeter stack height in the heel, 20 millimeter in the forefoot. We're looking at 7.7 .7 ounces, or 218 grams in men's size nine. So a very lightweight road, neutral, well-cushioned daily trainer, all right? And moving on to the upper in the Beacon V2, it's an engineered knit upper, especially here through the toe box. Uh, the most dramatic change to the V2 from the V1, the 2018 iteration, is this heel counter with the heel flare. Look at that heel flare, oh my goodness. Now I'm gonna say the performance of this heel flare, which is basically designed to help protect your Achilles tendon, um, I did not notice a dramatic improvement in performance compared to the, let's say, the looks or the or the aesthetic appeal. Uh, it looks kind of cool, that heel flare, but I wasn't, it wasn't jumping out at me on the runs like, okay, this is so much more comfortable because I have this extra material here riding up my Achilles tendon. Um, I actually didn't notice it at all, which is actually probably a good thing. It's just there. Now, if you were to run in this shoe for, let's say, a 15 mile or a 20 mile run, who knows, maybe that heel flare would help. But for me, I did not notice a dramatic improvement okay moving on to the midsole it's exactly the same check moving on to the outsole it's exactly the same okay let me explain basically it's one piece of fresh foam from heel to toe just like yes just like the v1 okay exact same midsole exact same outsole don't fix it if it ain't broken, as they say, right? I will point out real quick, though, on the outsole, these rubber pods are designed to increase the durability of this outsole. After 50 miles, I am noticing some wear and tear, okay? Eh, I don't know if you could take this shoe to 300 miles. Now, I will not personally take the shoe to 300 miles, but if you're out there and you have 200 plus miles, let's say, if you could give us an update, that would be invaluable down below in the comments. And as far as fit goes, I went true to size, but okay, I'll save that for the drawback here in one second. But as far as length of the shoe, I went true to size and we're good to go there, spot on. And for that comfort, we're going with that midsole ride. It is so smooth. And yes, that's my positive as well for the Beacon V2. It's so smooth. I don't even know what to say about it as far as like, you just don't even, through your foot strike, you don't even have to think about where you're planting your foot or how you're towing off. It just happens so naturally in this shoe. So I love the fact that it is a smooth transition, uh, but through the upper, okay, well, let's just dive into it right now. My drawback or my negative for the Beacon V2 I do, I'm enjoying the heel, the heel counter, the heel cup, the lockdown is fine, the collar is fine. I, yes, just like the first impression, I'm getting a ton of scrunching up of the material, the upper material through the toe box and through the eyelet chain. There's too much material for my foot. Now, some people have mentioned in the comments in the first impression video that they said, Seth, don't tell New Balance to change that because I need, they need this person commenting, a couple people actually saying, no, I need as much material as possible for flex through the upper so that their foot can basically fit inside the shoe well. Well, for me, it's just not working. That is my drawback, my negative for the Beacon V2. It just seems like New Balance, you put a little too much material up here and I'm getting a lot of scrunching and it's not causing any blisters, but it's, it's noticeable, especially the first mile of a run and then you kind of forget about it, but I don't like it. And I think also, just one more point on the upper, I think New Balance, you will eventually nail the eyelet chain. Right now, it just feels a little too flexible. I would actually almost prefer a little more rigidity through this, it's basically the lacing system. It's just night, it's like the lockdown is there, but it's it's not perfect yet. So you're, you're moving in the right direction, New Balance with this shoe. And how will I use the Beacon V2 moving forward? Absolutely easy days for me but it's light enough. It's light enough that you could use it for a little more of an up-tempo day. Uh, I think it's a little too soft for, 
for me, for tempo days and long, even long run days, I prefer a little more stability in my shoes. It's just so soft through that midsole. I am definitely gonna lean toward, just like the Beacon V1, I'm gonna stick to easy days for this shoe, which is a great option to have in your running rotation, and why not? We're gonna go with it. Question of the day, I was thinking about this on the run today. Uh, question of the day, what is your go-to easy day shoe? any brand, any model, what shoe, or if you don't own one, that's okay. What would you like to strive for down the road to be your easy go-to shoe? Who knows? Maybe it's the Beacon, maybe it's something else, maybe you need a little stability through your shoes. Let us know down in the comments, that'd be amazing. And for that score, we're gonna go with seven out of 10, okay? That's a little lower than I was hoping for. Mostly, well, actually 100%, it's because of this upper and this toe box area scrunching up as I'm running. And the price, we're looking at $120. Not too shabby, not perfect. I think at 110, 115, like I said in the first impression video, New Balance, you would be spot on right there in that 110 to 115 range. Now here's the kicker, here's the kicker. I would personally, I would personally go buy the Beacon V1 over the V2 right now if we're just talking about value, okay? I know, it's crazy. I saw on Amazon, in fact, I'm gonna link down below, and I'm also gonna link to Running Warehouse for the Beacon V2, uh, but on Amazon, I'm seeing the Beacon V1 anywhere from $35 to $80, depending on your size, depending on the width of the shoe, you can buy this V1. It's the exact same midsole, everybody. The, the dramatic change, as you can see, is the heel flare. And basically, the heel flare is nice, but it's not screaming at me like, okay, this is a dramatic improvement. And yes, the V2 did lose just a little bit of weight, but not much, it's not much. Um, so bottom line, everyone, I'm not, I think you could save money by just going and picking up the V1. It's the exact same midsole, exact same outsole, exact sa the ride is, is exactly the same. The only major change is the upper. And frankly, I am not getting as much scrunching up through the toe box in the V1 compared to the V2. Two. All right, I know a lot of you might not want to hear that, but that's my, like, go save some money and just buy last year's model. And yes, I'm going to throw you a curveball. We're going with V1 for the keyword. It's not really a word. It's an iteration of a shoe. So when I say V1 and V2, that means version one, version two. So V1 down in the comments. Thanks for hitting it up. All right, that's it for today, folks. Seek beauty, work hard, save money, and love each other. See you tomorrow.